Hello, um, my name is Kevin Ronan. I work here at CQ University and I work in a number of capacities but work in our clinical psychology training program. Uh, and so yeah, I'm a clinical psychologist by trade and I'm talking to you guys today about positive thinking. And I guess the first thing that I would say about positive thinking is that sometimes easier said than done and I'm guessing that I'm probably telling you something that you already know. Um, have you ever had the experience where you have, you know, studies have been getting on you, your boyfriend or girlfriend's in your ear, your parents are getting a little bit demanding, you know, the, those kind of things that might lead us to not thinking so positively. And some good Samaritan comes in with a, with a don't worry, be happy message, you know, spoon a cement and all those kind of messages that we get from well-meaning people. And sometimes those messages can be useful. Um, but other times, I'm guessing perhaps that they're not, you know, we, we're in a space where that kind of simple message may not be the best one for the moment. So in terms of positive thinking, I guess the one thing that I'd say about positive thinking is that, you know, moving from a more being down, not thinking so positively, to, to thinking positively, while it's not something that we can just magically do, I would also say really quite clearly that positive thinking is a choice. And we can make a choice to be thinking in particular kinds of ways. So one of the ways to do that is through what we in psychology talk, talk about it in terms of kind of looking at our self-talk. What are, what are we saying to ourselves? We can make choices about the kind of words that we say to ourselves. So if, if studies are getting on top of us and we're saying, oh, this is all too much, I'm never going to get this done, I'm going to bloody fail, that sort of talk, that's a cho ultimately that's a choice that we make that sometimes it can feel kind of like it's automatic and it comes up just as a natural part of the way that we address things. But I would say that if we make an effort and we look at that self-talk, we can actually make a choice about changing that self-talk to other forms of self-talk. For example, that sort of idea that, you know, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to get onto this, I can't do this, I'm going to fail. Other kinds of self-talk might be replaced that allow us to start making an effort, to start putting a step forward. On that same theme, one of the things that we know in psychology is that if we approach problems rather than avoid problems, that typically invites more positive thinking ultimately. So when we look at a problem like anxiety, the most evidence-supported intervention for anxiety that we know of is what's called exposure. But all exposure is, is helping people face their fears. If we choose to face our fears around study, around whatever it might be, and we choose to approach it and deal with it directly as a problem and apply, apply some perhaps some problem-solving strategies. So we don't have time to talk in length, at length about problem-solving strategies, but there's problem-solving strategies out there where you can address a problem quite directly. Um, for, for, for another problem, depression, the, the most evidence-supported intervention is quite a simple one. It's called behavioral activation, so it's got the technical term, but all behavioral activation is is getting onto things that we generally find pleasurable or that we're good at. So when we're in a negative space and thinking kind of negatively, our ability to do a, what's called approach coping, to go towards things, whether it's facing our fears or doing more positive activities, typically can translate ultimately into starting to think more positively into having more sort of go-forward momentum. I guess the last thing that I would say about positive thinking is, is that oftentimes we as humans tend to look at our problems. We also tend to look at what we're not good at rather than what we are good at. So one of the things I would invite you to do that, that more and more psychological therapies do these days are help clients identify their strengths and use those strengths as frontline solutions, as we call them, for problems that they have. So I would invite you to, to maybe just as a little exercise, take stock of the strengths that you have. And as you start to look at that, you may say, oh, I don't have a lot of strengths. But if you put some time and effort into it, you will uncover the fact that you have many, many strengths, some of which have been laying low maybe even for years. As you take stock of those strengths, those strengths can then be applied to problems that you have. Um, so there's, there's a variety of ways that we can move into a more positive kind of thinking space. Um, and, and I would invite you to, you know, maybe consider some of those strategies.